A little bit of an adamant guy v fucking arachnid. Look at this guy. 29 citrus berries. I will not say no to that one. Oh my god, our harvests are insane this run. What the f bro? 25 lums? I'm gonna take that sh I'm gonna take that sh Morning gamers. <clears throat> my sleep schedule is actually pretty good, but uh, I'm late today because I've been playing hella Bellatro. <laughs> Was raw cloning events. I beat the final V2 that I hadn't beaten in the gym yesterday. I struggled with it for like two fucking times that I was there. I attempted like 20 times total, I think. It was sick. Okay, anyway, more Peko, Aura Wheel, Hunger Switch, Shuka Berry. I don't know anything about this fucking Pokemon, man. I guess I should always poison Braylon when I bring him, huh? But fuck it. Yep, so this max speed Breloom outspeeds by one and lives every crit roll by one. <laughs> it's crazy. This Kingler has an Assault Fist, so it's actually really hard to kill. And then this should always be Fake Out. I'm just gonna Liquidation. I think Superpower is a, like a range to kill. I probably should have just given like an item. The most this can do to me is like Covet, so... Okay, free for the goat. Alright, this fight's a little bit iffy, because this Araquanid's really annoying. But I think we found something cool. So this is a Focus Sash Beautifly. That's okay. We simply fake out. Into Acrobatics. Baiting slow kill scissor. This is all very standard, very straightforward. Nothing too crazy about it. I thought for a second I didn't bring Magnazone for some fucking reason. Okay, so this is always dual wing beat because he sees the kill with it. This only has dual wing beat and bullet punch to damage. We're going to Electro Web. He's going to use his Steel Gem. All very standard stuff. This is completely unnecessary because he uses bullet punch anyway, but. <laughs> Whatever. The Magnum was still important because we need to... I guess we don't need to show kill to Araquanid. So unfortunately Magnazone doesn't just straight up kill the Araquanid. And the problem is it has Mirror Coat and Iron Defense. And also the highest special defense you've ever heard of in your life. Um, and then it just kind of spams Scald at you, Rain Boosted, and like burns your shit. It's... Disgusting. So the way we found around this is we're gonna go to Araquanid, our own Araquanid here. We're gonna get scalded. That's fine. We're gonna hit him up with a little soak action to turn him into from a water bug type into a pure water type. That's fine, you can protect, I don't give a shit. How soaking a Pokemon in the rain turns it from a water type into a, wa a water type is beyond me, but that's fine. Okay, Iron Defense completely doesn't matter. And now we hope that he clicks Scald on this turn. If not, we have to stall him out a little bit. Meganium is pre-damaged so that one soak always puts it exactly into Overgrow range, but a crit never kills it. And now that he's pure water type, Overgrow Leaf Storm will always kill him. That's fine. The backup strat is to spam Poison Powder. 
Because I can't leave Storm right now, because he would just kill me with Mirror Coat. So we're going to Poison Powder. Perfect. That's fine. We might never actually get to see this Leaf Storm pop off. We just gotta click Poison Powder into nothing here the entire time. It's the only thing that makes sense. There we go. Now he puts us into Overgrow. 63, that's perfect. That's exact Overgrow. That was a minimum roll from the Scald. Which we accounted for. And uh, he's a pure water type, so he's fucking dead to this. Uh, we outspeed. Yep, there's nothing... Nothing more to it! That super effective sound effect is so satisfying there. Beautiful. I think it'll not be the last time that we use Soak. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I think it's gonna... Come up again. I feel like getting into the habit of doing this repel check, it's probably good, right? Because of pre-damage stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a really good habit. Really good habit to have. Although, honestly, I could just probably say, if I ever accidentally run into an encounter on this route, I would probably just clause it. Like, one of the reasons I didn't clause the uh, Electros stuff, right, is we can imagine a scenario where fishing has a really rare, really good encounter in abandoned ship, and then I fish, and I don't get it, and I get Electros. I'm like, oh no, I didn't mean to do that at all. I meant to surf, remember guys? I told you. And then I just close it, right? We delay 118. You always, always, always delay 118. Because that means you get a life orb. Except your mistake wasn't genuine. Was genuine? Well, it would seem that way, right? But you could imagine a scenario where I pretend that that was a genuine mistake. But, like, there's no way that this would... If I say I'm always going to clause... If I beforehand say I'm always going to clause that, no. If I had beforehand said, before into going into abandoned ship, if I had said, if I accidentally fish here, I'm clausing it, it would have been okay. But I didn't say that beforehand, right? So I would have had the option to fish there, get something really rare and good, and be like, oh, oh, whoops, I accidentally fished, but I got something good. Guess I'm catching it. But if I beforehand say I'm clausing that if I fish, I don't have that option. But yeah, I will say, if I ever accidentally run into a 119 encounter on any of these attempts, same with like 117, I'm delaying for fishing, I'm accidentally going in there for pre-damaging, anything like that, I'm just always going to say it beforehand. If I accidentally run into an encounter on 119 ever, I'm always closing it. Damage this Oranguru a little bit, always has to go for the kill on Karakasa doing business, because um, it sees a fast kill on it, because we have Iron Ball, and we're pre-damaged. And then we protect. The only thing Shifter can do this turn is exactly fake out Karakasa doing business. Yep. Perfect. And now Shiftry always has to explode this turn. We kill Oranguru before it can do anything. And Karakasa switches to Magnazone. Which should never be dead to explosion crit. And before Basque Legion being immune here means that Magnazone takes single target damage. Why is it always Karakasa doing business? It's just the cost of doing business, man. What do you want from me? Oh, it faked out again. What? Really? It can do that? Huh? Okay, that's actually really weird. Wait, yeah, yeah, of course. If there's no damaging move... Explosion on turn one... Explosion is just plus seven five percent plus zero ninety five at full HP. 
This is fine. It, it doesn't matter. This doesn't change anything. And then fake out is also just plus zero. Shouldn't fake out be minus 20? I guess not. I guess fake out is also just plus zero. I'm just confused that everyone else in chat is confused. That like the, the experienced players in chat are confused because it feels like this would come up a lot in this specific fight, right? That wouldn't play AI can fake out kill after turn one. Yeah, that's kind of true. Maybe? No, yeah, fake out would have to get some sort of discouragement. Yeah, this would imply that you can encore fake out, right? Shift tree faked out turn one and then it faked out turn two. First spirit lock animation here, I think. Yeah, it faked out again. Wait, this is weird as shit. What was out? It was Caracosta plus um, Basque Legion. I protected the fake out on Caracosta. Beriscuta is Mold Breaker. So Shiftry doesn't want to boom on its partner. Oh! So they're both discouraged. I didn't know the Mold Breaker worked that way. In my head, Mold Breaker is just always if you target a Mon with something, you're disabling its ability for that interaction. Does that mean... This is a Mold Breaker bug. Yeah, okay, I understand. Because th that shouldn't work. Like, if he had exploded, Oranguru still would have not taken damage. It's just that... Is, th is this abusable? Does this mean that, like, if you have a Mold Breaker Mon out, AI basically just, like, doesn't see a bunch of abilities? Now it explodes. It still used Fake Out. So I'm not really sure what's happening now because there's no more mold broken partner on the field. Is there just no, is there no AI for I'm the only mon on the field, I have no partner and I, I is explosion still discouraged even if there's no partner? I'm really confused. Moldbreaker cancel telepathy if the Moldbreaker Mon uses a move that can hit your partner. What's your rule for data loss? Do you just reroll? What do you mean by that? Like if I accidentally don't save? It's tough. It's really tough to claws. Usually I rule in favor of like, if I get an encounter and then I forget to save and the next day I boot it up and the encounter is gone, usually that means I just lose that encounter. Everything else would be abusable. That's how I've always done it. All right, we'll slow down for this fight again. All right, I somehow got another electrode that outspeeds this Mantine and Rain. This is like one of the only moments where this being plus speed even matters. We're gonna do another soak lead here, because the Skarmory is really fucking annoying and technical and weird and it can do a bunch of bullshit. Just don't worry about it. There's t there's like a 0 0.5 or even lower than that chance that Araquanid dies on turn 1 here. Because he can technically attack on turn 1, but it's really unlikely and then he also has to crit. Honestly, man, I probably don't need to do any of this shit. I think basically my entire strat works if hazards are up anyway. If I can be real, but we're just gonna do this now, and if I lose a Rack when it for it, so be it. But at least we'll have a nicely cooked fight and we get to see more soak action. The idea is we wanna enable Excadrill to 1v1 this with like rapid spins plus ground moves. So for that we're gonna turn it into a water type, taking away its Brave Bird stab and making it vulnerable to Excadrill's moves. All right, there's a really, really, really low chance that Spide Ops dies, or Araquanid dies here, but it's not going to happen. There we go. This just has, like, it's got, like, Sturdy and can then kill itself with, like, Brave Bird recoil, so it's really annoying to kill consistently with, like, a Rapid Spin or something like that, so... We're just doing this bullshit now. Basically, the goal is we spam Rapid Spin until we see him not click a hazard move.
That would be one of them. We have to rapid spin now, obviously, because hazards are still up. If he if he brave birds too much, it's a little bit iffy. Maybe we should just sit, should just let him set hazards. Okay, nice. Rapid spin will also make us faster now. Um, we might as well click a ground move now. No reason not to. What would be the punish? Because I can always, if he survives, I always wrap him after, and if he dies, he's just dead. Oh, because he can kill himself with Brave Bird Recall, but then hazards are still not up. Yeah, there's no reason not to Earthquake that I can think of right now. Oh, no, because, oh, there is actually a punish. I just thought of it. Because you could knock him into Cussap range. And then he could kill himself with Brave Bird Recoil. Yeah, we're just rapid spinning the, all the way from here. This is so unnecessary. I think I have this fight unlock anyway. This is Custap Barry. Just keep on spinning. Okay, we have to hope that Brave Bird Crit does not hit us into hurricane range here. Okay, he just spikes. That's fine. Cool. Soak, then spin. Alright, so this should be... Yep. Exactly only ever Scald. Which means we can go here. Just double checking this. I didn't scale for this fight. I just like scaling special attack on Electrode is just something we I'm assuming we would have done eventually anyway. So yeah, we actually outspeed this with Swift Swim. Or with this having Swift Swim and uh Magnet boosted maxed attack uh, max special attack Thunderbolt always kills. Does your Basque Legion have superpower? It do be having that, yeah. Dexa figured out the fake out bug. Ooh. Okay. Well, let me kill this. Oh, I so so I was just seeing fast kill is what you're saying. On uh on shift tree. Okay, I'm pretty sure this should always be Dragon Rush slow kill. Yep. We can just... Did I go Silver Powder? Yeah. Cool. And... Silver Powder X, those are with no pre burn, always kills. And we're just faster. I think this is always fly. It can be thunder, but it can't be surf, so. I mean, it doesn't matter. Torterra always had it. Yeah, this would have, I'm pretty sure, completely worked out fine if I just left hazards up. Okay. Minus one. Where did we get that Torterra? Uh, it's the starter, man. It's the starter. One thing about Peach Owl is if you give him a chance to soak, he will. It's true. It's true, I can't deny it. On the shiftry thing, Fake Out normally gets minus 50 when it's not the first turn. But there's an issue with Bad Move Check where it gets minus 20 for being an immunity and never gets to the minus 50 that goes for any ghost. Fake Out gets plus 9 for being Fake Out, plus 6, plus 8 for being highest damage, and plus 11 for being a priority move when Basculant kills Shiftry, so it gets bumped to plus 6, plus 8 total, which is higher than what Explosion can get to at full HP. I see. 
Okay. So you're saying it gets stuck at minus 20 and then gets bumped up back by all the other bonuses? Got it. All right, well, welcome to Weather Institute where um, we're gonna spend the next three streams talking about how the bolt beak bug works. I should probably check if Magical Leaf actually fucking kills this. Ah, uh, unfucking lucky man. <laughs> Come on, dude. I'm deleting poison powder. I've made my decision. It would contest this for the worst play in Nuzlocke -like history. Stop! <laughs> it's not even... That wasn't even that bad, bro. Poor Squirk, man. Okay, so... Meganium needs to be dead to highest roll Ice Beam. Which is 139. Which makes it, and I will double check, never dead to Pin Missile. Malamar is slower. Breloom is slower. And I'm pretty sure analytic AI, do, analytic bug does not matter. It's Ice Beam is just still most damage, and he can't see a kill with Psychic. Psychic would actually be fine, too. We'll see. We'll see if I ever click Synthesis with this Meganium again, man. Fuck it. Delete that shit. Okay, this fight fucking sucks ass, bro, and it's not even the worst- it's not even like the, the second worst fight in this institute, I think. It's arguably not even the third worst one. Tab back in, boys, it's time. Alright, so the first obstacle is this Barbarical that wants to set up Stealth Rocks really badly and has a Bright Powder. Which is obviously horrible. Um... And we decided to forgo a 1% to miss with Wide Lens to deleting Poison Powder for Magical Leaf here. Um, the reason I'm leading with this pre-damaged Meganium is because it sets up the only way I found to kill this Starmie. Alright, Rock is shit. This should always bait Starmie. I'm pretty sure this can never Psychic, even with Analytic Boost. Switch in here. We have Lumberry in case of Freeze. We take a Surf, we Thunderbolt him down. It's not great. That is really, really not great, because now this is random move from Berloom. And uh, we can potentially get Omega fucked. Okay, so this Berloom has a Bright Powder, and I have no more Aerial ACMs. We're gonna switch to Heracross now. Berloom is faster, which is why it came in in the first place. Obviously, yes, Mock Punch is priority move, but he's faster, so it doesn't matter. This is just random move. This can be Rock Tomb, this can be Mock Punch, or this can be Bullet Seed. Okay, so we need to see low roll Bullet Seed or just Mock Punch here. There's no other play. There's nothing we can do to remedy this. That's unfortunate. Okay. So we're slower now, so we're at least always hitting here. I think we can just die straight up. I'm pretty sure. It's it's unlikely. Nah, it's actually kind of likely. Let's see if we can get out of this somehow. This is guaranteed Rock Tomb or Bullet Seed. I have no switch in. How much is 5 hit Bullet Seed? On average, 21. 22. Realistically. So... So we would at least kill it before dying to burn damage. So we would at least not truck. Unless he rolls really high on all the bullet seeds. Rock Tomb crit... Doesn't kill us before burn damage. Okay, we're, we're pretty unlikely to truck, but Heracross is pretty likely to die. Hold. I think we're fine. I, I don't think we're dead. We're, we're, we're not dead to burn, right? 
I think we live. I think we're okay. He holds. <sighs> okay. Oh my god. Was that like minimum roll crit or something? I think that was like minimum roll. Holy shit, but this is Malamar now for some fucking reason. Oh, because I'm rock tombed. Oh, that's horrendous. Okay. We're in so much trouble. So this is random move. So our options are either hard or Raquanid, or do the Basque Legion pivot that we were planning on. But Basque Legion actually never dies to crit. I'm pretty sure even not with not even with poison damage, because we have citrus berry. I think we do the pivot we were originally planning to do. It's poison, so it can't hypnosis after. Let's see superpower. That's fine. It's fine. We live crit. It's all good. <laughs> he crits again. It's actually so insane. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. This is Psycho Cutter Night Slash. This is what we wanted. This is exactly what we wanted. We go here now. We have to avoid like double crit high roll. But I think we win this interaction. Okay. So now he can either superpower or hypnosis. If he hypnosis, or he can just attack. If he attacks or hypnotizes, we just kill with leech life. If he superpowers, he gets plus one defense. And we don't kill with leech life, but we heal a fuck ton of HP. That's fine, we have Lumberry. Assuming I equipped it. Thank god. <sighs> Holy shit. Okay, still not over by the way. Still not over, but looking pretty fucking good. So, the only answer I have to the Scolopede is Rhyperior. Um, Scolopede has a King's Rock. So, each pin missile hit has a chance to flinch, and it's the highest damage move on Rhyperior. Rhyperior one shot Scolopede. I literally. Okay, hold on one sec. First of all, this can be Swords Dance on the Switch, which is unfortunately extremely fucking horrendous. Um. That is, yeah, where we can still super wipe here. Um, we, we really want to see Rock Slide here, but it's probably going to be Swords Dance. If I stay in, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not dead to crit, but if I stay in and he Swords Dances then, at least I'm switching, like, it, I've not achieved anything. Because Rhyperior one-shots anyway. I really don't want to see Swords Dance right now. Please, Rock Sled. Please. Fuck. Oh, this is so bad. This is so fucking bad. Okay, he's Smart Strike. That's really good. There's like a lot of overlap there. Don't flinch! Fuck. That's probably over, I'm not gonna lie. That was 10% to flinch there, but these are a lot more likely, depending on how often he hits. That's a crit. Two times? Don't flinch! Yes! Oh. <sighs> oh, fuck me, dude. <laughs> fuck this fight. <sighs> yeah, that swords dance on the Switch only happened because of everything else that happened before that. Because if, Heri if Magnezone doesn't crit, get crit, then Heracross doesn't get Rock Tombed, which means that Malamar doesn't come in first, which means that, um... 
which means that Scallopede comes in first, which means it always sees kill on Heracross, which means we can bring Rhyperior in on what is not Swords Dance, improving our chances greatly, because Scallopede can never Swords Dance when Rhyperior is out, because we see slow kill, right? <sighs> RNG really, really, really wanted us there. Crit, worst move, crit. Um, crit. Into fucking... I guess this interaction was good, and then... Worst move into another flinch, but like at least he smart striked. I don't know. Is there was there was a lot of bullshit. There was a ten percent flinch in there and stuff, but we're through. We're out, and uh, this isn't even remotely the worst fight in this in this fucking area. So we're uh, we're we're not we're not chilling at all. We're we're in a pretty bad position.